Good morning, this is Bernadette. It's so nice that we have you on board today. Um, it's a very hot day in Barcelona and um, we are in the studio. It's too hot for my taste, but as you know, we are on the beach, so who's complaining? Now, today I have a great guest. I'm really excited to talk to her because she has a very unusual story. And I also think that she has something to tell that many of your listeners can really learn from. Um, as you know, European Life have different luxury weeks around the world, and um, we always work with a local team, a very small local team who help us with databases and contacts, et cetera, et cetera. And we are also having a European Life Luxury Week Phuket that will be in January 2023. We work together with uh, Thailand International Boat Show, which is amazing as it is, but we also work together with Busco Boating. And um, today I'm talking to Dion Schick. She is the co-founder and CEO of Busco Boating. She is a fellow chartered accountant, a forensic accountant by profession. Um, she is awarded by Singapore Maritime Consulting Firm of the Year, and she has several awards for Singapore government. How exciting is that? Already this list. Um, welcome, Diona. Nice to have you on board. Hey, Bernadette. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm delighted to be here, and hello to all your listeners. So you're in Singapore right now, right? Yes, sunny Singapore, nice and warm and uh, humid and a little bit a little bit wet. Uh, the same uh, weather forecast every day of the year. Well, I, well, I'm jealous anyway, but it sounds very nice to be in Singapore right now. Um, so, Diona, I told all the listeners that, you know, you have like a, to me, a kind of unusual story. Um, I know you're not from Singapore, so tell me where you're from and how do you end up as the owner of Busco Boating in Singapore. Tell a little bit about that. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so thanks for uh, thanks for that. So yeah, we originally came from New Zealand, uh, a small town in New Zealand. We arrived in Singapore in 2004 and we had our own boating business in this small town in New Zealand in the 1990s. I myself had a accountancy practice. Um, I was a chartered accountant in public practice and William had the boat business. And after 11 years of uh, toil and tears, we closed the business down in the 19, uh, late 1990s. And yes, we uh, moved to Asia in, in early 2000. I had the opportunity to have some fabulous corporate jobs in Singapore. And I knew that when the time was right, I would be coming back to rebuilding um, a boat business for the for the sort of the new environment and the new world, totally different than what we were involved in in the 1990s. So uh, I got a good job in Singapore on an expat package and um that, uh, that's been and gone now, and for the last uh, five years, I've been uh, building out Basco. Wow, that sounds like an adventure as itself. It's so nice to have <laughs> such an entrepreneurial story from you. Um, now, I'm very curious about that because I know your target group is um, boat buyers and boat sellers. And the last two weeks, um, we I saw everything coming by on LinkedIn. You can find Dayon on LinkedIn. I tell you later how you can find her. But I'm so curious because you're not only having a boat selling and buying business, but you also have an auction online. And I think that is new to me and maybe very interesting for a lot of our listeners who are designers or having a business and thinking of redesigning of what to do and how to um, make it work on a global stage. So can you a little bit tell me, because if I'm thinking of buying a boat, Diana, I have to say, if I'm, I'm in Barcelona, so I see this boat on your platform, I'd like to buy it. How does it work? Yes, so the platform business is um, obviously the model that many uh, entrepreneurs are moving into these days. Now, we actually started with this concept of buying and selling boats online uh, before COVID. So we set up Basco Boating in 2017, and this 
with the idea of being able to help more boat owners actually sell boats in Asia because it's actually quite difficult to sell your boat in Asia. The market is very small. It's a little bit illiquid, meaning that um, it's quite hard to find a buyer for your boat. So we wanted to introduce a new model, a new way of helping facilitate an easier and more effective buying and selling process. So one of the services that was being uh, done in Australia was online boat auctions. And we bought the online boat auctions to Asia in 2017. So um, uh, as, a, as a way to um, stimulate interest and excitement and bring more people to the negotiating table to talk about boats for sale. So it's a great opportunity for a buyer to find uh, genuine value and for a seller to sell their boat more quickly. So now I know nothing about auctions and also uh, a little bit about boating because we have we work with so many boat shows around the world. But say, OK, I'm going to buy a boat. How do I know this boat is a, a good boat, first of all, but also the payments? I don't want to, you know, it's it's a big amount of money. So you have to pay it and you have to just trust that it's all going well. So how does it work? Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. And, um, you know, buying boats remotely or buying apartments remotely, uh, you know, buying property without without seeing it, it's since COVID, it's become more and more um, acceptable to people in, in, the, in, their, in their minds. But having said that, you know, most people don't want to buy without seeing. So most people would much rather buy a boat by, you know, by viewing it. So that's really the first thing is, you know, most people would prefer to do that. Now, how you buy and sell a boat or a property remotely, there are different protocols. There are different things that you need to make sure that you do. You need to have better documents. You need to have better levels of trust with the, um, the, the seller and the buyer and the broker. Uh, you need to be willing to walk away more than if you're doing it face to face. Yeah. So it's definitely possible. Um, but yeah, you you know, you there are some different ways that you need to manage the the risks and make sure that you know who you're dealing with and that you deal with reputable and trusted, not just the brokers, not just the sellers, but everyone in the transaction needs to needs to be yeah. credible quality people. So can for example I uh, I go through all this and then after um uh, after I bought that can I return it if I don't like it or if can I return it if I say you know what it it's not what I thought it was it's on the picture you know all of us once in, in your life you you buy something and you think okay that's not it yeah. so could I just give it back to the owner or what So there's different ways that you can buy a boat you can buy a boat at auction which is typically as is where is no no guarantees as is where is sale normally when you buy a boat you don't buy it as is where is you buy it with conditions that you want to survey the boat and you want to see trial the boat so the type of purchase uh, can be quite different and you just need to know what type of purchase you're getting yourself involved in if you're buying an as is where is boat online at the fall of the hammer on an online auction you won't be able to return it and you probably want to um, have a different type of purchase arrangement if you want to have the option to in effect return the boat hmm. It sounds a little bit risky, although I think it, it's really, you know, the way it's you, you, you explain it to me, there are a lot of um, um, professional people involved to make this process in a way that everybody, it's like a win-win situation. Nobody is going out there to, to um, make it happen in, in the way that you lost your money. So I think it's a very excited way to do it now i was wondering i mean a lot of our listeners are um, designers or in the real estate business do you think this form you have of buying and selling would be fit for other any other luxury products we have on the market 
Um, yeah, so the model that we've got is more than just the platform. You know, the model that we've got is around um, this community and the network. So, yes, we have buying and selling online. That's just one part of a much bigger, um, if you like, success formula. But to answer your question, there are a number of business businesses in the market that have successfully set up um, buying and selling luxury goods online. An example is in Singapore, there is a very successful uh, platform that just simply buys and sells luxury handbags and shoes and those sorts of things. So those lower value items um, uh, are quite successfully sold on, the, on these platforms. And then there's also Property Guru, which is another platform for buying and selling houses online. So you just sort of have, the, have this hybrid model that some of the some of the selling and buying is done online, and sometimes some of it's done offline as well. So the platform can definitely be used for all sorts of luxury goods, um, auctioning bags and pictures and paintings and boats. But the actual closing of the deals, um, sometimes there is different ways of doing it, depending on the requirements of the buyer and the seller. You just have to be flexible. Yeah, I think that the process of the, the closing of the deal, that's kind of the main important thing. I think it, there yeah. is a difference between buying a bag, or, although, you know, yes. a good bag these days, if it's really vintage, can be a lot of money too. But a house or boat, that's kind of the tricky yes. thing. That's what I think is amazing with this online auction platform you yeah. have. Um, so I was thinking, I mean, I'm, there are a lot of listeners out there and I'm just going to call them also if they are having a online auction kind of form in any other way, or they have something to tell us about their story, um, in a way of, um, online selling, please contact us and who knows, we will see you in a podcast in the future. That will be, that will be great. Um, I was just wondering if. Do you have any tips or do you have any advice to people who are listening now and thinking, okay, I would love to do something with an online sales platform or auction, maybe with a completely other product, but do you have any tips or or advice for them? Um, yeah, you know, if you've got a particular area that you're passionate about, so for example, you know, you might like luxury handbags or you might, um, you know, you might, if you've got a particular, particular, you know, thing that you really love, you love, then that would be the first tip is to, you know, go into an area that you're passionate about. And it's got to be more, more than just making, making money. You know, you, you want to figure out how is it that you can actually serve the ideal customer that you're, that you're there to help. So for us, you know, we help people um, both buy and sell boats. And some of those are online and some of them are, are offline. Um, so the tip would be, you know, pick something that you're very passionate about, serve first and sell second. So figure out how you can help um, a, a particular customer achieve yeah. the result that they're looking for. And then, yeah, find a platform, either build one yourself or join a platform that's already been established and maybe you can uh, list your your products and services and uh, on, on that existing platform and also join some Facebook groups and contribute to the conversation. So see if you can, you know, give some advice and some expertise um, in some of the Facebook groups to answer questions that people have got about your product or your passion. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I have the feeling that, you know, uh, 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 just like my business, I think a great website, a, a great platform is like essential to be successful in anything yeah. kind of business online. So that's very important to me. But also, I think the cl the juridical stuff about it, you know, the closing of the deal, the, the contracts, yeah. you know, you cannot just make it up yourself. You need professionals on board to help yeah. you with that so you don't make any mistakes. Uh, it will cost you a lot on the end. I think you should not do this. Um, well, that was it was a very interesting um, chat we had, Yona. I think a lot of um, of our listeners are very excited to hear about this. If you want to know more about Dion, um, go to her podcast 
page, which is, of course, on our website, um, europeanlife.com, europeanlifemedia.com, let's say it correctly, that would be nice. Um, and um, get in contact. Um, thank you so much for, for your advice, for your story, and for your amazing um, tips you would give us. I think it looks, it sounds really good. I cannot wait to, to be with you in January 2023 to visit the Thailand International Boat Show and of course the European Life Luxury Week. It will be so much fun. So everybody who are you looking for a winter um, trip to go somewhere where the sun is shining, definitely go to Phuket. Mm -hmm. It's in January. Go to our website to see when it is. So thank you, Dion, for joining us today. Uh, it was a joy to listen to your story. Um, thank now, you, Bernadette. Yes, that's great. Thank you. So for everybody, like always, we have a giveaway today and uh, it's a free social media post so you can promote your business in a way we always do. And uh, I have a special question for you about Dion, of course. And the question this week is what kind of unusual business does Dion Schick has? Um, if you listened well, you should know this question. And if so, go to podcast at europeanlifemedia.com and give us an email um, and we will announce the winner of this free post in our um, in our podcast coming up. So thank you for joining today. It was a joy to have you all and uh, we talk to you next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.